Hello everyone, Bubbling Moon back again to talk about more Sky Dancers. If you like this kind of content and you're eager to see more, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share it on a platform, I guess. I don't know, am I doing the YouTube thing right yet? There's something going on in the opening of Sky Dancers, and I want to know if anybody else has picked up on it. So the animation in the opening number isn't exactly the same as the rest of the show. You can see a lot of difference in people's character models, particularly Queen Skyla, who has mint green hair, much like her husband in the actual show. But I also like her like robe outfit when she's acting as the school's dame a lot better than the actual outfit she's wearing as well. I don't know, something about the black starry robe seems a lot more mystical, magical, powerful queen than just like blonde hair and a green robe. There's also a significant difference in the Sky Dancers outfits, both when they're transformed and when they're in their everyday outfits. There's way more going on with the outfits, there's more personality going on here. Slam still looks like Slam. There's actually a holdover in this design because originally I guess he was supposed to be Chinese or something. Like you can see in this beta picture uh, about like what his original character was supposed to look like. There was a yin yang symbol that was present in the original design. And you can see in this beta clip right here that there's yin yang symbols on his wings. I like this design a lot better. They should have kept it instead of making him an annoying redhead. Bummer. Camille's design looks a lot more punk rock. I like it a lot. Jade, she looks more like a ballet dancer. I like this outfit a lot better than the like little mini dress she's always wearing. And Angelica. Angelica looks so much better in her beta design. In the like main design she has in the show, she's got a big pink bow and she's wearing like some Dallas Cowboy cheerleader knockoff stuff. In the beta design, she looks so much better. The outfit's a lot cuter. It's more like pop punk. She's got a nice black tie in her hair. Give me this version of Angelica. Why does she have to be the country dancer? Just make her a pop dancer. You messed up, Slam. Rub it in, why don't you? Let's go over some weird episodes. These are episodes that just kind of stood out from the crowd because their premises ranging from noteworthy to head scratching. Episode 10, that's the one where Jade's mom comes back into her life. Why is she coming back into her life? Just because this entire episode is all about like dealing with parental abandonment and I guess the whole idea is basically yeah just forgive them if they come back just forgive them and uh, let them be part of your life again because you know they're your parent and they love you a lot even though they left so it's kind of implied during the beginning of this episode that Jade's mom left when she was super young to pursue her career as a prima ballerina. So you do know who I am. Okay, that's not a great decision in my opinion, but it's a decision. Own it. You chose a defining moment, let it define you. And then we see in a flashback that the last time Jade saw her mother, she was like 12 years old. Like, yes, of course she remembers you. She was able to form memories for like 10 plus years before you left. Who wouldn't remember? You left your daughter who is 12 years old, also training to be a ballerina, by the way, and you were just like, no, it's too much. I can't keep raising you even though I've done arguably the hardest part of that. So I'm just gonna peace out, let your scientist dad finish raising you. It's not easy to believe in magic when your father's a scientist, but I'll try. Honestly, Jade, with this backstory, should not want to be a dancer. She should be like, dancing tore my family apart. I'll never dance again. <laughs> Jade's mom is like, uh, I'm so sorry I left you, but like, 
lady, I get that you had to like travel a lot for business or whatever. You've got to spend a lot of time with your dance company. Are ballerinas not allowed to pick up the phone? You didn't have access to a landline back in the 90s? And the whole episode ends with Jade going, Yeah, Mom, I want you to come back and see me again sometime. This was really nice, even though they didn't spend any time together. And this is just really frustrating. If somebody abandons you and doesn't come back for years and then is like, I really messed up, like, do whatever you want. I'm not the boss of you, but me personally... I'd tell them to take a fucking hike. Oh, you remember me? Yes! I was 12! You were helping me with dance class! Alright, another noteworthy episode, episode 13. The gang travels to the past. They're just stuck in the past in the Sky Kingdom. The Wingdom, I'm sorry, I'll get it right eventually. Wouldn't you know it, Skyla and King Skyler, or Prince Skyler, and Skyclone, they're all in the palace, and this episode leads nowhere and amounts to nothing. All we really find out from this episode is even before she marries Prince Skyler, Skyla is considered a princess of the wingdom, but, like, where is she a princess of? She has the exact same wings as the royal family, so... Is that a genetic trait? Is this a sweet home Alabama moment? Yeah, it it makes me kind of uncomfortable the more I think about it, because there's no good answer. Was she born to be the princess, or is this maybe some, like, Habsburg line stuff? Like, is this family tree shaped like a wreath? And they didn't even have to do the whole, we've got to sneak in and become ladies in waiting or whatever that they do in this episode, because at the end of the episode, they just go straight up to the king and they're like, hey, we're actually from the future in another world. Can you use the Sky Swirl Stone to send us back? And the king's just like, yeah, okay. No muss, no fuss, just like, yeah, sure, why not? There's the body swap episode where Slam swaps bodies with Skyclone. Most of the episode is just them, like, poking fun at, haha, you're bigger now, Slam, you're in the wrong body, you don't have your young fit body anymore, haha. Dude, he's an evil, megalomaniacal villain. You could think of other mean things to say about Skyclone than just poking fun at his weight all the time. Ugh. Disgusting. How can any creature bear to exist in a bloated body like this? The man is green! He wears a spiral black and white singlet. He's wearing a unitard and a cape at the same time. Make fun of his fashion sense. Make fun of the fact that he's, like, obviously painting himself green all the time. Something. All the bad jokes they make in the show, and they never once crack a joke about how Skyclone can obviously photosynthesize. Episode 21. Forgive your bullies, I guess. Jade is having a rough time in school with some bullies. Like, just some mean girls doing the typical, like, haha, smell you later, loser type talk that was so popular in the 90s. What's tragic is this report. If I have to listen to another word, I'll be drinking the poison. No bully ever really talks like that. Then Queen Skyla, or Dame Skyla, as she's known in the Dance Academy, is like, you know, I had a bully in the past, and we get a flashback of this baroness or duchess, I I can't remember what, but her name's Skyvia, because every character in this series that's from the Sky World is Sky something. Skyvia is mad that Skyla's going to become the queen, and she's mad that Skyclone got banished because he was her betrothed. But Skyvia is, like, always bullying Skyla. How you can bully 
the crown princess is very unclear to me actually because all she does is say like oh those flower arrangements are ugly i don't know if maybe i'm just kind of hard to bully or something but like if somebody said that to me I'd just move on with my day. Skyla extends her hand in friendship and Skyvia is like, oh yes, I want to put the whole past behind us. Uh, you're so magnanimous, my queen, and all that. And fast forward to the future where Skyvia is plotting the downfall of Queen Skyla. And like that that's the whole buildup here is Skyvia has been, for like 20 plus years, been plotting Skyla's downfall. So at the end of the episode, Jade extends a hand in friendship to her bullies because I guess she's not learning anything from the past right now. We've already established the pattern. This was not the lesson that we learned in this episode. The lesson we learned is if somebody has wronged you in the past, they will do it again in the future. Believe people when they tell you who they are. Episode 22 is about embezzling money from your real responsibilities and using it for your passion project. So Queen Skyla decides that the school has been ruined by a storm and she doesn't have the money on earth to fix it, so she's going to take the money from the treasury in the wingdom. Very responsible ruler. Very incredible, responsible ruler, Skyla. Your your dead husband in another dimension would be so proud at the way you're ruling his kingdom. It's a little low. Your Highness. Do as I say, Lord Chamberlain, and open the vault now. Skyla finds out that there's just no money left in the treasury. What does Skyla first think? Hope. Without money for the repairs, we have no choice but to close the academy for good. Not, oh no, my kingdom is ruined. We're all poor now. <laughs> and instead of doing what a real ruler would do at any given time and just raise taxes and make the lives of her subjects more difficult, she decides, all right, guys, it's time to go on a magic treasure hunt. So they have this treasure hunt, and immediately upon finding it, it's a bunch of diamonds. And she's like, oh, we can use this to save the school. Yeah, because a contractor's definitely going to take a bunch of unmarked, uncut diamonds as payment. I can't express to you how angry this plot point makes me. Because, you know, it'd be one thing for her to be like, here's a bunch of random gold coins you've never seen before because gold has inherent value. Diamonds are only worth what we agree they're worth. Diamonds are only worth anything once they've been like cut, marked, and put out onto the market. She's just like, ha ha, well, you know, I found a bunch of diamonds. We never really find out if she uses this to restore the treasury or not. 10 out of 10 for good rulers. Episode 24 is a really interesting one because there's a lot going on in this episode. Camille's parents have never seen her dance before. She's in one of the most prestigious dance academies in the country and her parents just don't care at all. They're constantly like, when are you gonna stop dancing and get serious? You need to be a lawyer. And like, fair enough, they make some solid points about how it's not a super sustainable career to be a dancer. But at the same time, your daughter is going to a really prestigious dance academy. You had to sign off on that somewhere, right? Unless, unless this is like a college situation, even then, I think they'd still have to be, like, informed, but they treat it like it's her hobby. This is all taking place on Christmas, by the way. She decides that she's not going to invite them to their Nutcracker performance. But Queen Skyla knows better than her student, so she's like, No, I did invite them, and they're coming, so just deal with it. And of course, the Sky Dancer thing happens because that's what the show is about. And they have to go to the Sky Realm. But in the Sky Realm, people are making 
reference to like the time of season it is and tis the season and in the true spirit of the season i will let you leave in peace but they never say that they're celebrating a holiday so did the sky citizens know about christianity are they christian do do they worship jesus what's going on here it, it's always weird to me when a magical girl show acknowledges Christmas because it implies a lot about the world that they're living in. Does the Judeo-Christian God know about and sanction what goes on in the sky realm? It's like when the Winx Club celebrated Christmas. Is Bloom a Christian? That weirdness aside, we've got other plot points that are happening in this episode because Sky Clone has the Dark Star, the opposite of the Sky Swirl Stone. It's got all the same powers, but it serves evil and not good. And if this was always a thing, then why is he trying to go after the Sky Swirl Stone? He should just want the Dark Star because... If the Sky Swirl Stone serves good and the Dark Star serves evil, he should know that he'd have better luck with the Dark Star. But no, that this is just brought out for one episode once, never to be seen again, because this is the end of the line as far as the show goes. We've got like one more episode. The Dark Star is very easily defeated by the Sky Swirl Stone. Yay, the day is saved. And then they have the stupidest Nutcracker rendition ever. Like, this whole scene takes like 10 seconds, but it looks like no effort was put into this at all. There's no backgrounds. There's only five people in this because, of course, it's just the five main characters because does anyone else even go to this dance academy? And Camille is a gumdrop. Like, there's so many important characters that they need in a production of The Nutcracker for it to be The Nutcracker. She could have been a sugar plum fairy or anything, but no, no. And then after the performance, Camille's parents are like, why didn't you tell us you could dance like this? And it's like, to be at this point in her career to be where she is right now, you had to take her to at least one dance class growing up. You had to know that your daughter had some dance ability, right? There, there's no way to get here without first being like, all right, I guess I'm gonna take you to this after school activity that I don't approve of because I want you to study and be a lawyer. Sky Dancers has 26 episodes officially, but there is a 27th episode. It's kind of hard to pin down because this extraneous episode is labeled as episode 6, but there's already an official episode 6. I have no idea what's going on with this episode. This episode has completely original dialogue and plot. Like, it's like they actually wrote this episode planning to make a real episode. But all of the visuals from it are just cut up and pasted together clips from episode 1 and 2. All of the colors are off, the values are off. I have no idea why they would do this. The very last episode of the entire series is basically a clip show. Angelica gets hurt again because there are two episodes about Angelica getting injured and everybody fawning over her and being like, no, you definitely will dance again. So my theory is they originally planned for this episode, A Friend in High Places, to be the episode 26, but they ran out of budget, so they decided to just put together a clip show, but they had this script ready, so they decided to just have the voice actors voice it anyway, and then they put some visuals to it just because. 
Like, I, I have no idea why they decided to do this at all. And then, as I said, the very last episode is a clip show of Angelica laying in a hospital bed crying about not being able to dance anymore, and everybody's just like, no, remember how good it was when you could dance? You can't give up. And then Breeze comes in, And he decides, you know what'll make you feel better? Kissing me. And while that's going on, the doctor's lurking outside the door. And he tells the nurse, when they're done making out in there, just tell her that the operation was a success and she's going to dance again. Uh, He's doing more good for her than I could. And that's a creepy thing to say, doctor. So, final thoughts on Sky Dancers. I think that they should do a reboot of this show. Honestly, I think it would be really good, especially if, like, the showrunners and the scriptwriter really had some passion behind it. There's a lot of lore in this show that's not really explored all the way. There's a lot of good basic characters that really deserve more flushing out and storylines. Justice for Camille. I want Camille to have a good love life. Honestly, I think that redoing good shows from the past is stupid and pointless, but garbage shows like this, shows that just were completely dead on arrival, absolutely you should rehash them and try to make them better. And the number one way I would recommend to make Sky Dancers better just immediately off the bat, Kill Slam! Bummer! Alright, the next Magical Garbage series is going to be Jim and the Holograms. I'm gonna try and get a couple episodes of Lolly Rock recap out in the meantime. Thank you so much for watching this far. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, fourth option, and that pretty much does it for me. Peace out!